Hey, what's up you guys? It's Amanda and for today's video, um, I'm here to talk to you about something that's fandom centric. I realize I haven't done this in a while and I don't know, I just felt like doing it because to be fair, I had this video idea while I was washing the dishes. I was thinking of some introspective shit, you know, something about myself, my past, present, future all those things and I'm also thinking about Game of Thrones because there are a lot has been a lot of like theories and memes basically everything everywhere about season 7 um, all over social media so it's in my consciousness and somehow two thoughts collided and this happened um, and before I dig deep into that I just want to say like season 7 feels a little bit too predictable and fan y to me. It also feels very fast-paced, um, maybe because there's just seven episodes this season. But um, it's under- I mean, they are trying to hurry things up. It's understandable. The timeline's all fucked up and shit. I'm not saying that it's not good. It still is. It just feels too- I mean, sometimes it feels too fan y even for me. It's that- you know, it's amusing but cringy at the same time, but I still love it. Um, so there's that. Um, now, video. Okay. Um, today I'm here to talk about how I realized that Sansa Stark is the most relatable character in Game of Thrones, like the entire series. Thought about it, like it occurred to me, then I thought about it more and I realized more and more how true the statement is. Now, just to put it out there before I just start talking about the main points of why I think so, um, I'm just gonna say that she's not my favorite character. The, the reason why I'm making this video is not because I love her so much or something like that, but it's just eerie to think about the parallelisms once you realize it and I know I just want to share that particular thought to everyone. I'm gonna begin of course with the start of everything, the start of her character development basically which is what she was like in season one. Now season one Sansa is annoying. I mean I read the first book She's more annoying in that because you can- it's literally her fawning over Joffrey <laughs> so much in the first couple of chapters. But even in the series, you know, we see this girl who is just so impressionable, so idealistic, so fantasy-driven inside her head that makes her super annoying. But if you look at it, um, when we were children, we also had the same tendencies to be as idealistic, as as more into this state of like having so many extreme dreams that we want to accomplish. Like for example, you say that you want to be a doctor, then you want to be a doctor. You're gonna play doctor, all of your toys. You're gonna. It's it's as simple as that. You, children have no notion of consequences, sacrifices, hardships whatsoever at such a young age. It's more of like dreaming for the sake of having dreams. That's the innocence that comes along with youth in general. That's basically her. It's more of like how stupid it seems if it's a character in a TV show, mainly because people watch TV shows and films to see aspirational characters. Characters that have so many good principles or characters that have interesting storylines and stuff like that and when you see something as childish and petty as that then most likely you wouldn't be drawn to that character you'd just be annoyed um but in reality we all start with that particular sense of um, idealism as a child um and we are also as impressionable like sansa has been described and has been portrayed, obviously, to reflect everything in her environment from the way she dresses, the way she does her hair. It's always a reflection of things around her. Like, for it's ever changing in a way that her environment changes, and she mimics that, similar to how children are. When we see, for example, our moms, our dads, our big our older siblings or basically anyone that we admire whether it's TV or someone we see in school we try to mimic them mainly because we want to be like them 
Um, and what better way to express that than through our clothes or basically how we project ourselves. Very similar to how Sansa does it. And speaking of environments and people that we mimic, there will always be people who will take charge of our lives as children. Now for Sansa, her main influences um, is Cersei, there's Marjorie, and of course there's, there's Littlefinger. But for us, that is in the form of our parents, our teachers. We somehow, like, she's easily manipulated as a character, whereas us, we're easily influenced, or somehow, subconsciously even, are influenced by people who are our figures of authority, which somehow is also another parallelism to her character. And going into authority comes the idea of family. So for Sansa, she didn't really get along with her siblings. Um, there was even a time where she somehow turned her back on her father just so she can get on the good side of you know, Cersei and Joffrey and because she's having this dream of being queen so she has to do what they say even if that means turning her back on her father even if she doesn't 100% like it. Similar to us where you know sometimes you go against the rules of your parents to impress your classmates or something having that sort of thinking that you know your family they're there, they're un they'll understand, I need to get into this cool group of people. Now we move on to the next phase, having that defining moment, having that thing that would change you, change that ide idealistic part of yourselves, much like how we need to grow up. First off is physicality. So there's Sansa with her red hair that is one of her most prominent features, and then she needs to dye it black. She needs to be this different person, take this different um, sort of identity because she, no one should know that she's a Stark. Very similar to how usually we get to this stage, probably puberty, where as much as possible, we find something or we do something to change that childish part of ourselves into somehow acting like an adult, you know, wanting to be an adult or something like that. Whether it's dyeing your hair, cutting your hair, changing your clothes, having your emo phase, having your angsty teenager phase, whatever it is, there's something that would change in you physically. For Sansa, it's stripping off that um, physical attribute that makes her Sansa Stark. And then another thing is that her character has always been this idea of innocence, of fragility, and her virginity is also one thing that used to be what is associated to Sansa. Like we have seen this many times, especially for the Game of Thrones. You know, there are many instances where, you know, when she bled, she was scared because she's not prepared for all of those things. And that indicates that she can get prego already. So most likely, you know, the wed like she should be wed and so that it could be consummated so you can see the fear in her eyes when she realized she she's she bled already um, and there's also this this scenario with Tyrion when should have consummated their wedding but good like bless Tyrion for not touching her that night so it's more of like um, emphasizing that idea of Sansa um, being this fragile innocent girl who is a virgin who is just stripping her off that because of what happened with Ramsay it changes her dynamic as a person and I'm not saying that everyone who goes through puberty or something like that like you don't like that what happened to her was really really horrible Ramsay was such a dick for raping her it was so annoying um, and that was the starting point of when I wanted Sansa to succeed, you know, to just, you know, just stand up from what happened. Um, you need, like, your storyline has to get better after that. I'm, all I'm saying is that there is a part of us that is some sort of our defining moment that strips us off of some of the mistakes we might have done during our youth, some of the annoying characteristics that we have, some of the idealistic things that we used to believe in and then we 
something will happen that will snap us back into this harsh reality of life that will somehow make us grow. And it doesn't have to be as horrible as what happened to her. It could be as simple as dealing with grief or realizing that you're losing your passion, like having self-doubt or basically just I don't know, as simple as going to college and realizing that you're not as good as you think. There are people who go through stuff like that. Throughout their life, they thought that they're like this and then something happens and then they're not that anymore. And um, I think that's also what happened with Sansa. Like, she has been this person that, you know, even if she's um, that annoying, easily manipulated girl from before, we still have people thinking that, you know, um, at least nothing bad has happened to her that much or something like that and there's something like that happens to her and it changes her as a character and that also happens in real life sometimes that we get a smack in the face reality just shifts our perspective and then suddenly we're this whole new different person and we strive to be someone better and that moves us to the next phase, which is the new Sansa, who's stronger, who's trying to prove that, you know, she's trying to define herself into this person that is Sansa. She's not trying to mimic anyone anymore. She's, she has, she is inspired, like her look is inspired by Catelyn, of course, but it's still more her. It's not anybody else anymore, which is similar to how we grow as an adult. Once we realize that all of those things that we believe in, all those youthful, idealistic things has challenges that tags along with it, we learn to change and we want to take control of our own life the best way we can, which is what we see her doing. She's trying. But at the same time, here comes the memes. So, as compared, like TV shows, as I mentioned earlier, we want it to be aspirational. Sansa is Sansa. Like, her storyline is sad in itself, but it's not as, you know, this heroic in arc as the other Starks. But, um, so similar to us, you know, we, we think that we have gone through some things. We have our own personal demons, our own inner struggles, but there are still people that we see who are much better, who we aspire to be, who somehow seems like on a different level than us, which is somehow what Sansa is like in all of those memes that we've been seeing. But overall, what I liked about um, the past episodes in this season is that when um, John entrusted the North to her, it's very representative of what we aspire to be as people in real life. That we've gone through so much, whether it's external or internal struggles, it, it very much counts. We have experienced so much, we have our own things that we deal with, and then just when we thought that, you know, the decisions and the choices that we do don't count to other people, there's someone who gives us a chance. And that goes in the form of Jon Snow. He gave her a chance to prove herself and to, to like, run things her own way, control things her own way. Which is very much something that we as people aspire to be, especially as adults. You know, we want someone to believe in us in that way. Someone who would give us a chance. And that, to me, is what makes Sansa's character relatable. Um, she is like watching yourself, watching your own character development just in a fictional fantasy thing, trope thing. But if you look at the parallels and the symbolisms of it and the underlying tones of it, it's very much like real life. So I think that's a reason as well why a lot of people are not as fascinated. It's like watching yourself on screen, how you grow as a person. It's just that you don't want to admit it <laughs> because you want to be this other cool character, of course. And there's that. I mean, I think that's the very reason as well why I didn't like Sansa in the first couple of seasons because we usually don't want to admit like 
we usually don't want to admit characteristics that are annoying. If it's manifested in a different way, we notice that it's annoying, but if we're doing it, we don't. So, um, and I don't know, like just looking at it in, uh, in this new perspective, it sort of made me realize that, hey, um, Sansa may not be my favorite character in the series, but if I were to be real, um, I I'm gonna say that she I'm like most likely the same as her in real life. So I don't know. What do you think? Um, do you think that Sansa is also as relatable, or do you think there are other characters that are just as relatable as her? Um, what are the parallel sims? What do you like about season seven? What do you think of it so far? Tell me down in the comments below. I really like want to hear your thoughts about this. So also, please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you're new to my channel and would want to hear more from me, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this. Talk Thrones to me down in the comments below. And I'll be seeing you again soon in a new video. Bye!